it was introduced last year for the first time, and we took child marriage as one of the issues. But in fact, it, there's a whole holistic uh, view of, of, of girls' education now, which is clear, the evidence is there, to saying that this is the only thing that has a trans, transformative impact on all the trickle-down effect of poverty. Because this always starts with poverty, poverty and disadvantage. UNICEF, of course, is, is a rights-based organization. It's based on this wonderful document called the Convention on the Rights of the Child. It, put it by your bedside. It's a very <laughs> eloquent and wonderful human rights document. But in there, it says a right to an education. But in there, in Article 12, it talks about the right to a voice. It, it talks about you having the right to determine your future. And we heard in that wonderful segment, I am my own master. And I think that is what education is doing. It's empowering the girl to take more control of the situation which she faces. But to get to that point needs an awful lot of support. And I think uh, it, it's, it's very um, emotive to look at individual cases. UNICEF's trying to look at the world. Uh, universal education in the Millennium Development Girls was, was a very important goal. And in many ways, we made a lot of progress, um, even on gender parity. But there are still 54 million children not in school, in primary school. 31 million of those are girls. So we see this as a, 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 a tragedy of unfinished business, but also a wonderful opportunity now to start looking at more innovative ideas of how do we fix this. One of the big problems is the transference from primary to secondary school. So even if there's a primary school education, there's a big dropout at the age of 10, 11, 12 for many, many reasons. We saw some of them here, some of them are economic. They have to go to work. The household needs that income. Right, how do we solve that? We've got to find subsidies. We've got to find ways of working with the community of maybe even a half day of work and a half day of school. You've got to work from the grassroots. So we see, um, and the title of, of this year is really Innovation for Girls' Education. How can we tap the creativity of the intels of this world? How do we tap your creativity? How do we connect with universities to start using our, our creative abilities to crack some of these barriers. And so UNICEF is starting up what's called innovative labs, and they're all over the world, and they're in countries like Sudan and Kosovo uh, and Uganda, and they're coming up with surprisingly interesting results, that when you actually empower young people, particularly with technology and mobile phones and SMS technology, suddenly they have the beginnings of a voice. But look, we'll talk about some of these issues in the future. I was very struck by the image of the, the girl with the band carrying the... When I went to Northern Lice recently, it was to examine some water projects in a village. But frankly, the first thing I saw was a hill. And the water supply was up the hill. And I saw a girl just like that. In fact, she was younger. She was about seven. And she had the band on. She was carrying seven jerry cans full of water. Now, you know how heavy that is? and a baby on one arm as well. Meanwhile, the men stood down in the village. And I thought, this is shocking. This is the reality. This girl not being in school, and in fact being in bonded labor. So we have an awful long way to go yet. Uh, and I, I don't want to say that we haven't made great progress in the Millennium Development Goals we have in child mortality and, and other issues. But in this issue of education, not enough.